It all started with a very simple idea. Tell the stories of how successful middle market CEOs made it to the corner office. I'm Brand Handley, founder and managing director of Resource Options International, or ROI. We're the USA's premier executive search firm focused exclusively on empowering middle market companies to attract, hire, and retain A players while transforming top executives' careers and lives. ROI's Into the Corner office is dedicated to discovering how middle market CEOs advance their career, and we're making these remarkable and sometimes quite unbelievable stories available to you for the very first time. Listen and learn about the challenges they've overcome, the interesting people they've met along the way, and the lessons learned that steered these executives' unique journey into a middle market corner office of their own. I know you enjoy these CEO stories as much as I've enjoyed recording them. So thank you for listening today. And if you like what you've heard, rate us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm looking forward to you joining me on the next great middle market CEO adventure into the corner office. Today, my CEO guest is Todd Marksbury. Todd has served the Canvas Credit Union family as the President and Chief Executive Officer since June of 2015. Through his charisma and love for the credit union movement, his customers and his people, assets have grown more than 59% during his tenure. They now serve over 240,000 family members, an increase of more than 40% since he joined in 2015. Prior to joining Canvas, Todd served as the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at Delta Community Credit Union in Atlanta, Georgia. In addition to overseeing the health and heart of the Canvas family, he actively serves on the board of several prominent credit union industry partners. He has his business degree from Eastern Kentucky University, having grown up in the Florence, Kentucky, Cincinnati area. Todd Marksbury, welcome into the corner office. Hi, Brent, good morning. (laughs) <laughs> Good morning. Great to have you here uh, on a sunny, bright morning in Connecticut. It's uh, actually snow still outside, but it looks like spring's on its way. How is it where you are today? I'm looking out my window and I see the beautiful Colorado Front Range. I see nice. snow on the top of the peaks, but um it's it's beautiful. We're ready. We're ready for spring and summer here. <laughs> is the ski season already over, or are people still enjoying the slopes? We've had a, a lot of snow uh, this winter, and so uh, I think they're gonna we're gonna have some good good uh, skiing still. Awesome. Listen, Todd, I'd like to start uh, kind of a little bit about the early years, and uh, I uh, I don't think you grew up in Colorado. I know we had a planning call, but why don't you tell us a little bit about those early years? You know where you grew up and what your early family life was like. Absolutely, I grew up in in. Um, little town called Florence, Kentucky, so just right. outside of, of Cincinnati, Ohio, on the Ohio River. My family is still there. My parents uh, uh, are fortunately still still with us, and, and all my siblings and nieces and nephews are still there. I graduated from Eastern Kentucky University, so down in the middle part of the state, uh, way back in the mid-'80s. And uh, have have in that time, I've lived there. I've lived in Cincinnati. I've lived in Miami and New York City and Colorado. Wisconsin and Atlanta <laughs> and and now I'm I'm here in uh, the the unbelievably beautiful Colorado. Sounds like a wonderful place. And I actually know Florence well. I think if you recall from my background, I was Procter and Gamble for about eight years, and two and a half, three of those years were in Cincinnati. So uh, drove through Florence a lot, uh, going to and from the airport for the most part. But actually had some friends that just loved that side. Lovely little community. What What was your early family life like? What did mom and dad do? Brothers and sisters? Thanks for asking. My um my dad uh, is a retired policeman. My my mother was a, a waitress uh, growing up. Uh, we had a a, a very very uh, modest upbringing. Um, we, I think, I lived. It's interesting. Uh, up until the sixth grade, um, home was always a, a, a series of apartment complexes. So <laughs> I did. That's the way we we very very modest uh, upbringing, yeah. but uh, unbelievable parents. Just, uh, you know, it was about work ethic and consistency and, you know, working hard and nobody owes you anything uh, type of upbringing. Brothers and sisters? Brothers and sisters. Yeah, I have a a young, I'm the oldest, so I have a younger sister. 
uh, and then uh, two brothers as well. Nice. And and what were some of the you know early things that you remember that mom and dad taught you? You know, it sounds like obviously working hard was one. Uh, any other lessons that you kind of take from your childhood? Well, you know, we joke here. The the, the folks at at Canvas have heard me say this. You know, we we don't take sick days. Uh, and what I mean by that is is um, uh, you know we. We uh, we went to school every single day uh, right. I, in my 12 years. I think I, I missed three days. One time I had the mumps and uh, the other two days we actually it was because we had moved. And so, um, you know, and then I think my my other siblings never missed in 12 years. So wow. it was it was about showing up, showing um, doing up, yeah. good, good work, hard work and, and uh, being very consistent. Sounds like those have been lasting lessons for you. Absolutely. Any other early influencers, you know, was there uncles, aunts, uh, coaches along the way that you had, uh, you know, a special relationship with or that you learned things from? No, not, 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 not really. It was, okay. you know, huge influence from my dad. Yeah, um, yeah. just, uh, you know, my hero and still is. And, and, uh, you know, he worked hard every single day as a policeman and, and like many uh, or most, policeman he he he'd finish his shift and and then uh he'd come home he'd eat real quick he'd change and then he went off to go do various uh off duty detail you know mm. whether he's working at you know policing around a McDonald's or at a high school football game or in a, right. at a department store uh you know just i i watched him and and but yet he never missed any of my games and uh, he was always around and he was always available to you know, throw ball with me and things like that. Holy you know, athletics were a big part of our life, but yeah. yeah, he was, he was the primary, he was the one that I looked to for everything. That's awesome. And, uh, how, how long was he a police officer his whole career? 30 plus years. Great. Great. He, did he recently retire? Or has he been retired for some time? He retired about 10 years ago and, yeah. and now he's a, uh, he retired and he's a federal agent at oh. the, or a federal marshal rather at the, uh, federal courthouse there in Cincinnati. Okay. Got it. Got it. Does that part time or is that a full time? It's a full time thing. I, wow. I wish that it was part. I wish he would just retire, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if he knows anything other than working hard. Well, you know, some people need to keep working. That's maybe may not be a bad thing for him, Todd. It, I, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> what about your early school years? Were you a good student? Uh, I was a I was a good student. I, I um, it, Part and parcel to the the whole thing that you show up on time is that you right. also work your tail off and, um, you know, making good grades were uh, it, it was understood or implied in our household. The cool thing growing up in Cincinnati, I grew up in this, you know, went to school in the 70s uh, yeah. when Cincinnati Reds, the big red machine were they were uh, the baseball team. And it was a Keep really Rose. cool thing. The Cincinnati <laughs> Reds used to always have uh, this this program where you would get free tickets for straight A's. And oh. So for, as a as a uh, uh, a young boy growing up in in the greater Cincinnati area, man, you had to go see the Big Red Machine. So sure. you know, I had the I had the motivation from my parents, but also the motivation that I wanted to go see Pete Rose and Johnny Bench and Joe <laughs> Morgan right. and all those guys play. So. I what worked really, era. really hard to get straight A's. So I was, a, I was a pretty good student. Now, is that something the Reds organization did with all the local schools or did the school do it and buy the tickets? No, it was what the Reds did for oh. all the local schools. It was a really cool. They had a that's great. They had two things. And actually, they played well. They were uh, played well to, to how we grew up in our household. They gave you tickets for straight A's and they gave you tickets for perfect attendance. And nice. so I, I, I was able to check both of those boxes a lot of <laughs> times. Well, I can imagine the motivation around that. What was the name of the owner? Was it Marge Schott? Wasn't that her name? Oh, Marge Schott was, was later. She was, but was she? when I was growing up in the 70s, Marge what, didn't own, uh, she and her husband didn't own the, the Reds okay. back then. I can't remember who owned, but yeah, yeah. she in the late 70s uh, into the 80s, she and her husband bought the the Reds. Okay, that's that's the period I remember because I lived in Cincinnati in the mid 80s. And she was quite a character. She was very colorful. <laughs> that's a good way to describe it. What about sports for you? Did you play baseball or are there other sports you're engaged with, Todd? I did. I played uh, I played baseball, uh, basketball, football, and ran nice. track. But my football was my thing. And then in yeah. high school. Um, I ran track as well. And then, in fact, I, I ended up running 
um, going to Eastern Kentucky University to run track. Oh, cool. Cool. So you lettered in high school with it, I presume? I did. Or multiple letters. And and what uh, when you ran track in college, what, what were your events? I was uh, uh, 110 meter high hurdles and 400 meter um, intermediate hurdles. So I, uh-huh. I ended up being my my specialty in co- college was 400 meter hurdles outdoors. Okay. And did you run track all four years? I didn't. I actually yeah. uh, I ran two years and, and then I, I, I discovered my passion for music. Uh-huh. And that I could make money while I was in college singing. And uh, I, I decided that I, I wanted to make some money while I was in college. But not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, were, were you involved in music earlier on or that's something that came later in life? No, no I, I was I was always involved. We were a very musical uh-huh. family. And, and my, mo- my mother was is, is still just a, a really wonderful singer. And uh, I, I did it, you know, start. 